Paneloids Podcast. Kyle here with Jeremiah. Little itty bitty episode for you guys right now. A nice speedy run through from things that we read to current events. Jeremiah, why don't you start us off with, let's call it the bullshit in the air bullshit in the air we usually talk about movies and tv shows a lot and we're gonna take a pause on that our solidarity is with the writers and with the actors guilds we want what's best for them so we're not going to give studios any kind of our time until they treat humans with respect and pay them what they rightfully deserve and not use ai to replace them please still pick it still get what you're worth know your worth and we'll move straight on from that for something that i am super excited about skybound announcing that they have obtained the print publishing rights of universal monsters that's frankenstein creature of the black lagoon dracula the mummy and i'm sure there's others that i'm forgetting but are they all going to be connected is what's going to be really fun is if they have a dark monsters universe within skybound that'd be dope and francisco francovella better be doing covers for every single one of these fucking series because i will buy every single one of them obviously kirkman does incredible with zombies building that universe and we don't know if kirkman's going to be on these titles yet i don't think they've been announced yet but he can do horror really well you were a huge fan of outcast i was (laughs) but no really though it all seriousness i think they're going to do a good job with it i think the universal monsters deserve the praise that they're going to get really get thrust in front of a new audience i mean unless you're a cinephile that goes back and watches these old movies the remakes the invisible man that's another one i forgot about the invisible man these remakes they're not terrible but they're not in the same flavor as the originals so it'll be cool to see what they do with it i'm really excited to see what they do with it just quick sidebar disney's 100 years variants that are coming out in the comics where they do cover homages with disney characters they've Mm -hmm. been really good my sister's been loving them i've been loving them did you see the one that got coming out (laughs) with daisy duck it's the greg land edge of spider verse cover swipe with daisy duck dude you need to get that (laughs) two shots you've taken at me it hasn't even been two minutes and two shots i apologize but yeah i had to man well i do have a greg land commission you do yes and i will be seeing greg land at the time of this release it would have been two days ago i believe his wife runs his commission online list and all of that great communication a very easy transaction and was delivered to me promptly and was sent to cgc directly for me oh nice do you have it i have it away okay 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 i didn't know if you got it back yet or not i know you showed me a photo of it but Yeah, I've gotten to the point where I have so many graded books that I decided to box the most valuable ones and then in turn start to display the less valuable ones, which don't get the same kind of attention. So I'm circulating my collection to appreciate some of the nonsense I have acquired. With the Amalgam Dark Claw, I I do got to ask because I've never had one. CBCS Mm -hmm. case versus CGC case. It feels slightly thinner. I would compare it to two versions ago of cgc oh so old school cgc okay but nicer plastic i mean this just might be me but my first impression was like oh this feels nice and familiar so yeah no it's not bad i don't like the label it just doesn't pop the same i don't like the label i don't know why it's just so similar but so wrong cgc has gone through three labels in the time that they've existed really they're old Mm. what i call their typewriter script label and then the foggy number label and now the new bold number Number label. Those are basically the three labels that CGC's ever had. CBCS has had like five labels in two years. They really, I don't think, hammered down their look yet, but I've heard really good things about their cases. I have like 20 CGC books. So well, one day I'll get a CBCS book. I'm not against it. It's just they are not doing private signings. Right. The private signs of CGC is a drastic thing and has changed everything in the way I think about conventions, everything as a whole. But the last time I had a graded book from this company, I cracked it, sent it to CGC, came back slightly higher, and recently sold it on Heritage. Thank you, Heritage. But yeah, so the other thing comic related that's newsworthy and somewhat worth talking shit about in a roundabout way, specifically because it does tie to that thing we will not speak of, they're making Miss Marvel a mutant. And they're doing this in the comics in a way that she died, as everyone knows and is upset about, as it was leaked, I believe, by Marvel, weirdly enough. Yeah, so they're bringing her back in the Krakoa fashion, which is still around and hasn't been put to sleep yet but she's gonna come back to life and they're gonna do it the mutant way making her a mutant is she always won is she won now who the hell knows but the new costume is an x-men costume and people don't like it i'm indifferent to be honest i don't hate it but it's not like exciting the x's on the hands are cool 
I kind of like that. The rest of it, whatever. So yeah, Miss Marvel is a mutant to align itself with the MCU. Because of all the Krakoa stuff, I don't do mutants. I'll be doing the Uncanny Spider-Man for sure, just because Nightcrawler is my that boy. Is cool. But I don't read any of the X-Men titles, Marauders, X-Factor. I did read excellent but that's because i'm a mike alred fan and that's kind of its own it is mutant but it's separate because the mutant encompasses so much and to throw miss marvel in there as well i mean i'm not against it you want to align it with the broader picture that's fine by me the costume it isn't a huge diversion from her current costume or what was her current costume before she died mm. so throw a couple x-men logos on there the x's on the hands are a nice touch the actress who plays miss marvel is one of the writers it's obviously going to breathe life as a show mm. in terms of that same i want to say coming of age feeling mm -hmm. and i think they're going to put enough power behind it where it's going to be good no matter what so going back to another cultural diversion of a mm -hmm. character jason aaron's run on punisher has come to an end at the time of this recording it will be announced in two days but we have a new punisher curious to see who it is or what it is so let's guess and then we'll see if we're right because again this is going to come out so if we're wrong you can unsubscribe or something i don't know leave a one-star <laughs> review on all platforms i think we're getting a new female punisher we had a female punisher in the mid knots mm. for a little while she had her own series i think it was only eight issues if i'm remembering correctly didn't she flip on him she flipped on him in a daredevil issue i want that noted interesting i think it's time for a female punisher i'm not gonna say that it's gonna be electra only because i know that electra is showing up in the new daredevil series where aaron cooter is the artist on it so it's not electra but i do think we are getting a female punisher if i could have my way misty night that's a really good one and if i'm right i want you to make a video of like he called this shit i would only counter that because she has such a large role in the current spider-man that cody ziggler's writing oh she's in the miles mm -hmm. series so i would only counter it with that although he's about to get into some carnage nonsense so it could be that she's now going a bit of a separate way or they'll tie it in but that's a really good one i would love to see it i mean she's got the attitude for it she's got the abilities for it how do you piss off a bunch of people who have punisher stickers who don't read the comics there was a tiktok i saw i wish i saved it but he was like yeah we should make this new punisher like a black trans activist who has a husband you know just like mm -hmm. every point that would piss everyone off we should hit it and make sure that logo is exactly the same, the same. The stickers. Be awesome. go be back awesome. to the exact sticker logo and match those pickup trucks <laughs> oh man i commented i was like i wasn't sure where you were going like i didn't know if it was sarcasm and i was about to like hit on interested and then when you said stickers on those trucks match them i was like you're cool I like you. I'd be fine with that. I think my guess is kind of leaning on everyone else's guess. And the costume seems like it is an old school shield with the placement of the belt and kind of like arm and leg bands, kind of like pouches. It looks a little bit like an older shield uniform. Mm -hmm. And with that, I would say not Nick Fury, but Nick Fury Jr., I'd be okay with that. Well, is Nick Fury still on the wall? Like, do we know with Original I, Sin years and years ago, is Nick I Fury still the man on the wall? I'm completely ignorant to who and what is happening with S.H.I.E.L.D. and if Nick Fury Jr. made it past any of the stories you're mentioning, because I remember reading that. And I was like, OK, that's a funny way to like match what's going on, on screen. But that's my guess. I, or an ultimate one. Maybe they'll just take the ultimate one being some stuff's going on with that and ultimate invasion and the maker. Just that's a little far fetched because it's probably its own thing. But. Yeah, probably its own thing. But regardless, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Yeah. Punisher is always a tough character to write and to read in a sense. He never really has huge runs. I mean, if you look at his runs in the 90s, War Journal, the original Punisher runs, those were really long runs, but they're not critically acclaimed. And pretty much anyone who's worth their weight in salt is measured by their Punisher run. Nathan Emerson's Punisher run was fine. It was good. Becky Cloonan's Punisher run was fine. It was good. Jason Aaron's has got a lot of flack for the new logo, but read the damn thing. It's fantastic. It's also Jason Aaron, so you kind of can't measure that to normal people. I think I've said it before where I was never like big Punisher reader, but Jason Aaron, of course, I gave it a shot and it wasn't the story I expected, but I really liked it and mm -hmm. I didn't finish it yet. But I kind of assume just because of all the stuff coming out, of like where it's going and like I know Frank goes off someplace, wherever it is, space, something like that, some nonsense. But, you know, it was a good, interesting run. 
And yeah. spoiler, I mean, just bringing his wife back in any format, even if it was just like a ghost kind of thing, like any format hasn't been done. Now, is it like a little bit of like, let's bring Uncle Ben back? Kind of. But it was done in such a way where she was clueless to why she was back and back in the world and didn't really understand that she died and didn't understand where her children were. Very well done. Just that alone could have been the comic. They could have just focused on him trying to figure out her and her trying to understand why she's alive. Like, that was good. All the crossover stuff with Daredevil has been fantastic as well. Mm -hmm. Chip and Jason have done a really good job of going hand mm -hmm. in hand with that. So definitely interesting to see the new daredevil run and the new punisher run who's going to be the new punisher please be misty knight moving on from that polar pass you'll go first i'll go second okay so we'll talk about poison ivy 14 i know it's not the most current issue but that's where i'm up to and this series just continues to hit each and every issue i mean the art is absolutely insane i have a page floating behind me piled behind other pages and other prints just the story of like it being intended to be a six issue continuing the first few after I was like, all right, well, where's it going now? You know, spoiler, she took down Woodrow, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever his new form name is. But like she took him out, like she ate him. And I was kind of like, how do you top that with the Poison Ivy story? Because she's not like a front running character to get an ongoing that keeps going. And it was a little bit slow paced of like, OK, her trying to figure out what she's doing now that she decided not to kill the whole world. And now she's like going back to the roots of like environmental terrorists and she's looking and seeking out people to take down that are hurting the environment and in turn is still dealing with this infection that she has. And it's so well paced now. It like regained its footing, especially with issue 14, that. I don't know. I think it's like one of my favorite series ever. And I know I'm biased to Poison Ivy, but it's just such a good creative team and such a good story for her where she's not a hero at all. Like it's anti-hero to the fullest, but still teetering on villain when shit goes down. So how many copies are you bringing to New York Comic Con? I got to go through because I have I had a slowdown because it was getting to be too much and I'm very bad. I got yelled at again for not going to the comic shop enough, especially with picking up all those variants. The pile was getting insane and the cost was getting insane. I mean, last time I went to the shop, it was like 450, but I wasn't there in a while in my defense. Oh, well, that's actually not in my defense. That makes it sound worse. <laughs> so I slowed down a little on variants for financial reasons, but I got to go through it because I have some in there that really need to get graded and signed. That would just display so nicely. It's exciting that she's going to be in New York, though, so you can... It is. Kind of... It's very exciting. I'm only going <laughs> one day this year. Same. Not the same day, so that's um... great. So it's going to be a little weird, but yeah, I'm going to visit our good friends, Desert Wind, drop off books, and then get a few raw things signed, and more so just saying hello. It's going to be a weird... And actually, by the time this episode comes out, granted everything goes as planned, I don't have to cut this section out, I might cosplay for the first time. Really? What are you considering going as? <laughs> well, if you watched the last episode, that hopefully <laughs> happens. I've acquired a dentist uniform, one might say. <laughs> and being Ryan Stegman's always at New York, I might dress up like Roger from The Schlub and walk around my belly out. You know, no one will know who I am, but when I see Stegman... He'll know. Yeah, you yeah. need to do that. By the time this episode airs, I will have been at Terrificon. I'm going mm. to Terrificon for one day, Sunday. I'll be wearing this hat. So if you see me around, you can say hello. Or you would have flip said hello, off. maybe. Or flip me off. That works too. <laughs> yeah, that's where Greg Lane will be. I've got a couple books that I'm bringing. Steve McNiven's going to be there. So I'm looking to, to get some stuff signed by him. I don't grade like you do, but Captured Collectibles will be there. So might grade one thing if I do. But as for me, Polar Pass, I want to talk about the world's finest teen titans written by mark wade and the a cover is a chris samney cover in the next issue we're getting a paula rivera cover has nothing to do with me wanting to talk about mm -hmm. this series but mark wade writing anything is always worth picking up and what he did with batman and superman world's finest he just brings that same energy and flavor to the teen titans world finest i think it's a four-part mini it may go on longer but yeah it's great the cardstock cover costs you one dollar more but it's Paula Rivera, so you should get it for the second issue. They're fighting alongside Justice League in the first issue. Excited to see where it goes from there. You get the classic quips. It's the original Teen Titans team, too. So definitely you should go pick this up. It's definitely a pull. Nice. 
So my next pull or pass is also a pull. I know once we start to get to like the later issues, which is where I'm at right now, they most likely are going to keep being pulled. I don't give up that quickly. But again, Scarlet Witch, that continues to be great. That's Orlando and Pacelli. I mean, Steve Orlando was born about a block and a half from where I live. That's funny. Basically, if you're not reading it, the general idea is that Scarlet Witch has a door. And when people hit that point of... I don't want to say rock bottom, but nowhere else to turn to. The next door they go through brings them to Scarlet Witch. And now issue four is starting to acknowledge Darcy's part in all of this because she's kind of been Scarlet Witch's sidekick in a sense. And we knew Darcy went through that door, but we never knew why per se. And now it's starting to come to light that she's basically being hunted Spoiler, by this kind of cult, kind of superhero gang that she might have like murdered one of them because they weren't as cool as they thought they were. And it's like they're kind of look like Amazonians, kind of not what I expected. I thought it was just going to be a more like deep thing with her where it's something family related, not superhero related. And no, she's got like this whole side story of <laughs> some nonsense. I've been trade waiting on Scarlet Witch. I might now just go hunt the single issues. What I've heard from the series is absolutely fantastic. Russell Dodderman covers Steve Orlando writing it. Pacelli on art. Yeah, I'm probably going to go hunt the single issues. My LCS probably has it. It's kind of fun now. I don't want to say it's, it doesn't have a serious tone, but it doesn't have a playful tone either. But it's just a fun adventure now because it's like you weren't expecting things to get more outrageous i pay 3.99 4.99 5.99 fucking 8.99 if you're ultimate invasion to be entertained to escape mm -hmm. the world a little bit to have fun that word you've just said to have mm -hmm. fun that is the best recommendation you can give in my opinion so whether it's serious or not doesn't mean that it can't be fun so yeah i'm definitely gonna hunt that down moon knight is getting a new series moon knight city of the dead number one i think it's a six-part mini moon knight has been one of the better books on the stands and it's one of the marvel titles that has held on for a while i think we just got issue number 27 released so the fact that it wasn't reset after 9 or 12 is saying something so this series i think is going to run along conjunction with the regular moon knight series i think you have to bounce back and forth in between them if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong but it's definitely something that i'm looking forward to moon knight is hot this book kind of can't go wrong with it so it's worth a poll, at least for the first issue. I will update you all with the second when the time comes for that. We should come up with another phrase for that, where it's like, it's a poll, but we haven't read it yet. Like a sub. You know, it's going to be good. You know, it's worth looking into and then yeah. make sure we bring it up again to confirm we were right or wrong kind of thing. I'm subbing to until and then it's either pull or pass. You get anything cool lately that you want to talk about? I got this nerf knockoff Thor hammer which i can never pronounce correctly and i want you to make fun of me so i'm just going molnir? to continue with the molnir molnir there you go pierre also struggles my co-worker <laughs> gave it to me it's just like out of the back of his truck he was like oh here i got this for you like my neighbor gave me a bunch a bunch if i had one i would just leave it on my toilet because i find that funny it's actually not that light because I think I have like a hollow Halloween one floating around somewhere in my place. And I was like, this is actually some like weight to like if you hit someone, it's like not nerf friendly. <laughs> like it's going to hurt. <laughs> it's nerf or nothing. For me, I got this new big baby behind me. I don't know if it will be cut out of the frame, but I got another comic press. This one's a much bigger comic press. Now I have a 15 by 15. So I can do three comics at once versus when I had my small one. Yes. Yeah, I believe you have a stack to send me got another uh, black and white beyond the white knight has a dent you asked if i can fix it i guarantee i can have i sent you any photos of my work lately i've gotten damn good at it i've only ruined three books and two of them were mine okay <laughs> out of like 35 books pressed the two that i ruined were mine were really rookie mistakes and the one i ruined that wasn't mine was a complete fluke in my opinion but it was a four dollar book i gave him the book back and bought him a new one not the end of the world for that do you want to walk us through real quick just like the quick press process for me personally i do a dry clean on the book so i look at the book look at any perfections that i can take out with either an eraser or a makeup cleaning pad or a, a dust sponge just get the okay. book nice and clean and then i put it in a hydration chamber and for me my hydration mm. chamber i use tupperware and a metal grate and i place the comic in there wrapped in a towel and get the bottom filled with hot water to hydrate the book 
You don't want to get the book wet. You just want to get the book hydrated. For the people who steam books, I don't understand how you do that. Good on you if you don't ruin the book. For me, I just like getting the book hydrated. Heat a press up to 165 degrees, press it for 10 minutes, leave it for 12 hours. Some people like to press it for 10 minutes, flip it and then press it again for 10 minutes and leave it. But I actually press with a metal plate on the bottom, which is heated to the same temperature as the hot plate on top. Mm. So I am pressing from both directions at the same time with the same temperature. That's how I do my pressing. So far, a bunch of the books that I've pressed are at CGC. They haven't come back yet. I just pressed this one for myself and I'll be sending this into the Roy Thompson signing. And I am betting money that it's a 9.8 because it was probably a 9.6. I'm betting now it's a 9.8. Something to keep in mind if you're looking to press books, especially if you're looking to press modern books, specifically Marvel books. If it has a digital code, you need to be much more careful with that book pressing it than a book that doesn't have a digital code. You can scar the book really easily if you press the digital code into the book. So you need to have protection in between the code and the rest of the book. What do you use for that? Just another backing board. So what goes into the book is I have 100 pound sheets of paper that go on either side of the cover to keep that from searing to the book because they mm -hmm. are made of slightly different material. And then I have a staple stabilizer in the center fold of the book so the staples don't rip through the book or come out the other side. For a Marvel digital stamp, I put two more backing boards in between where that page is with the stamp. Once you press a Marvel stamp into a book, you cannot unpress it. It is scarred. And the highest grade you can get on it with a book that has that scar is a 9.4. In um, a bubble in a sense. Yeah, essentially it's what you're doing. Mm. That being said, when you send me your books, if they have digital code, please make a note of it. So I'm more careful with them. But most books don't if they're DC or older than 2012, I think is when they started the digital code thing. Yeah, and lately I've noticed they've just been randomly not putting them in books. I think they're going to pull them all because of Marvel Unlimited being updated. But yeah, I got a new press. It's pretty. It's green. Nice. My wife does want me to put stickers on it for some reason because I put stickers on my other one. And she says I ruined it, but I didn't. Paneloids Podcast. That's uh, Paneloids Podcast. I actually have something I made I'll show you on here. Let me see if I can figure this out here. It actually didn't take long to make. It's rather easy. It's like a three minute process. Wait, what? Is that real? That is real. And that is a 13 week picture. And yes, I am making this content. <laughs> Congratulations, dude. Thank you. We might have a hiatus coming in the near future. My hiatus, my job's just going to get more difficult. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm speechless. We have a few things to figure out. Dude, that's awesome. Congratulations. I guess the sale on Heritage makes slightly more sense. I'd say so. Thank you, Heritage, for helping this possibly have a college education. Exactly. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> 